You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. Hey guys, this next problem is a real test in logic. It's titled jump game and we could solve it using overly convoluted methods and all. But there's a really nice, really simple, really elegant way of solving it. With that being said, let's just head straight into it. Jump game. You're given an array ARR. You start from index zero and the element at each index denotes the maximum distance you can jump from that index. Now this just explains it, which we'll get into eventually anyway. If it is possible to reach the last index, print one. If it is not, print zero. We'll have a look at our input. Six is the length of the subsequent array. And this is the array. Let's take a slightly closer look. Right here, we can see our array. Now we start at index zero, that is this position. And the number four tells us we can jump to any one of these four positions, one, 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 or zero. Let's assume we just jump to the next position, position one. From here, since the number is one, there's only one possibility. We can only jump to the very next index. So let's go to the next index. It's similar in this case and the case to follow. But once we hit zero, we can't go anywhere. All roads lead to zero. And now we're stuck here. We can't reach the final index, that is nine, which is why our output will be zero in this case. And just to show you an example of a case where the output would be one, let's have a look at this array right here. From the beginning index, we can only go to the next index since the value is one. We can jump only once. And now the value at that index is three. So we can jump straight to the end. In this case, our output will be one, not zero. Now guys, you know how it goes. Just wait around if you want to see the solution and make sure you think about the problem a little bit. If you've got the solution, if you know the answer, hit the link in the description below, head to our Hacker Earth platform and code it out for yourself. All right guys, welcome back. Now, one approach to solve it is to try to generate every single path. Once we hit a zero, and if all paths lead to that zero, or if all paths lead to zeros, we'll be stuck at that position, provided it's not at the end. But that's overdoing it a bit. We really don't need to generate each and every single path. We can do this in a single iteration, in a time of O of N. How? I'll just give you a clue right now, and we'll see how to proceed from there. Once we start at four, we know we can visit any one of these four locations. So we're going to set a maximum value, the maximum possible location we can currently reach. Now, as we move on to element one, we'll see that the maximum possible location remains unchanged. In other words, this element is irrelevant because we can reach the next element anyway, with or without this element, which is why our max will remain unchanged. How will this help us solve the question? Will it help us? Is it relevant at all? Just think about it, guys. We'll get back really quickly. All right, guys, we're back. Now we've already established that max points to the maximum location we can jump to. So once we start at four, we know our maximum location is here. Now, when we go to the next element at index location one, we can only visit element two from there. However, we can visit that element anyway from the very first element, which is why this element is irrelevant. It doesn't contribute to our max value at all. Similarly, for the next two elements, the next two elements don't serve to update our max value either. And now once we hit zero, what max tells us is, regardless of what path we took, regardless of how we reached here, this is the last location we can reach. From here, can we do anything else? Can we move any further? And the answer is no, because our max will not be updated. If we add our location, our current location to the value at that location, max's value will not get updated, which is why at this point, all our iterations will stop and our execution will end. It will return a value of false. In a case like this, where we know the output is going to be true, let's check how it works. Now, the moment we hit the first element, that's one, we're going to update our max value. So our max is going to be 
a current index plus the value at that index. So that is zero, which is our current index plus the value, which is one. So our max points to the second element, element three. Now, once we move to three, our current index is one, the value at the index is three. So our max goes to four. Now, when we visit our second element, that's two, the maximum location it can jump to is two plus two, that's four, which is the same as our max. So max remains unchanged. When we hit eight, it becomes three plus eight, which is 11, which is really outside our array, but we can update it anyway, just to be safe. And once we hit the last element, we know we've reached the end. So we terminate our program and we return a value of one. Now, using this method, we're able to solve it in a complexity of O of N. Let's have a look at the code as well. This is it, short and sweet. Max is initially zero. Now, when do we know that our conditions have failed, that we can't move any further, that we're stuck in a position? That is when our array, that is our I index, crosses the maximum location. That's when we know we can't move any further. So if I crosses max, we return zero. Otherwise we update max. This is basically uh, the ternary operator in Python. Essentially, if this condition is true, max value will remain as it is. However, if I plus ARR of I is greater than max, then we put that greater value into max. If it manages to get by this entire array without ever hitting this condition, that means we have reached the end of our array. So we return one. We can actually delete pass. Now, once we hit compile and test, a sample test cases have been passed and submit validates our code and shows us that every test case has been accepted. So guys, that's how you solve the problem jump game. And this is an interesting problem because there's a, it's a two-parter. There's another problem called jump game two, which is based on this, but just slightly more complicated. We're going to tackle that as well in one of the videos to come. I hope you like my solution, guys. If you have a better method of solving it, make sure to comment down below and make sure to hit the golden trio, like, subscribe, and the bell icon. It really helps us out. It's been Vivek Kalur, and I'll see you all next time.